What up, what up, gang? Welcome back to the Atomic Dom Show. This is episode eight, and the new year is here. I hope it's treating you well. Uh, on this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about Boys Club. It's starting to wind down, and high school season tryouts are coming, so be prepared. Uh, Pro Volleyball Federation is serving it up, and what makes volleyball a unique sport. So all that right after this awesome B-roll. Hit it. All right, all right, man, oh man, it's been a while. I know, right? Uh, it's it's things been busy, you know. Work's been busy, uh, vacations, holidays, all kinds of crazy things on the schedule. Uh, club practice, tournament travel, blah 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 blah. And speaking of which, uh, we are in Milwaukee um, this this next weekend, which is going to be great. Uh, looking forward to that trip. I've got a couple of uh, family members there who play volleyball, uh, so hoping to see them and maybe they're uh, maybe they're playing. But anyhow, all right, so let's talk about Pro Volleyball Federation. Uh, They are serving it up. It's their inaugural season. Uh, A couple of big surprises here. Uh, First of all, it's happening on the 24th of January, and it's Atlanta Vive versus the Omaha Steaks. I know they're not the Steaks, but I'm calling them the Steaks because I like the Steaks, right? I think that should be their name. Anyhow, uh, then on the 25th, it's Columbus Fury versus Grand Rapid Rise. Uh, and then on the 26th, it's the Vibe, Atlanta Vibe versus the Orlando Valkyrie. So you got three great matches to see uh, in three days in a row. And here's the best part. You can catch all that action live on the Bally Live app, right? And here's the second best part. It's free 99 for the inaugural season, right? Come on now. You can't beat free 99. All right. So download the app, log in, do your thing. And I would imagine it's going to be a paid for view service once you know after the first season but anyhow so you're you know you're talking you're talking nearly 40 matches right another thing's going to end in may or something or june so you're talking 40 matches uh free uh and help kick off that season get attached find a team find one you like there's one coming in dallas i believe it might be kansas and also our our town here in indianapolis uh, we are getting one in the next season in 25 so uh, all that stuff's going to launch we're looking forward to it and you, like I said, you can't beat free 99. So be sure to check that out. All right, moving on to boys club. We are winding down in boys club season. Uh, like I said, we've got a tournament in Milwaukee this weekend. And then we've got two here local in Fort Wayne. And another one here in which Noblesville, Westfield, kind of Grand Park area. So it's kind of central Indiana. Anyhow, um, let's talk about the new surge in boys high school volleyball. Right, There's a lot of states adopting the sport. Right, It's an emerging sport for some. Uh, some of them have been on the clock for a year, some of them maybe two. Some of them are just starting on the clock to be that emerging sport before they get adopted as a varsity sport. So you need to get involved, right? How are you going to do that? Well, you're considering trying out, right? Well, you got to have a skill level, you know, anything. Even if you're a mathlete, got to have skill level there, right? If you don't have the math skills, you can't play, right? So same thing, volleyball. If you don't have the skills, you got to get the skills, right? You got to get better to do it, right? So is it too late? I don't know. Uh, If you're a senior, you're just trying out, you've never played. Depends on your school, I guess. But most likely, probably not going to make the team. But same thing if you're a junior. If there's people who played years before you and much better than you, you just got to understand that. That's the fact, right? That's how it is. So you got to get in there and work, do some work and get noticed, right? Uh, All right, so how do you get in the game? Well, uh, let's dial it back to like fifth and sixth grade. I know around here in CYO, uh, it's pretty active parents who've played, and uh, we're we're fortunate enough to have some former players come back and coach those younger teams. So it's all good skill, good training uh, that gets inbred into the system early on. You know, we're raising young athletes early, early on. So uh, some of the public schools are starting to get on board. You'll see it in grade schools. Uh, where they're having teams for boys now, which is great. And, uh, you know, start early. If you're fifth, sixth grade, get in there, get involved, make your errors, make your mistakes. You're going to get better, trust me. 
Um, but anyhow, attend open gyms. Open gyms are probably happening right now because I think we're probably six weeks away from uh, actual tryouts, right? Uh, so get in there and open gym, and you'll discover very quickly uh, where your skill level sits. You know, you might be <laughs> you might be bottom of the barrel. You could be top dog. Who knows? Uh, all right. So start playing club, right? You got to play club. You're going to get those touches in club that you're not going to get just in the high school season, right? Competition tends to be a little better during club. And then that gets spread across all the high school teams and just raises the bar for everybody, which is great. Uh, take lessons, attend camps, you know, uh, who knows where the camps are. Go, go out of state, you know, maybe a local college or university. They're always hosting a camp. Beginners camps are good for those of you guys who uh, are just getting involved. And, you know, don't forget that there are advanced camps, too. Um, travel. Travel to a club if you need to. I know guys who play here in Indiana who will travel two hours away to play club, right? And they still travel the country to play. Uh, but that's, how, that's what it means to them. You know, they're looking for that experience. They want to play at a higher level, and they're preparing themselves now. You should do the same. Okay? So don't be afraid to travel. I know tryouts are happening happening soon so what you're going to need to do if you're not seeing if you're not tapped into some sort of instagram page or tiktok or facebook page that your team is attached to your high school athletics whatever it is i know they all have those groups so jump in there contact the coach contact the assistant coach figure out how you can get involved right um maybe you figure out like hey i'm in the gym and these guys are a lot better than me i really don't have any skill not a knock against you it's just an experience thing right Maybe become a manager, be a part of the game that way, you know, learn how to take stats and be in the huddles and go to everyday practices. And, you know, there's a lot of value there that helps grow your knowledge. So um, let's talk about getting cut. Getting cut is tough, right? Nobody wants to be cut, but you have to realize that there are people who are better than you, right? And it's, there's going to be a time where you're going to face that in life, right? Uh, so you just got to, you got to learn to deal with it. It's part of the game, right? It's all how you react to the situation. Just remember the <clears throat> let's say this the same water right that hardens an egg also softens a potato okay so it's all a matter of how you react to that situation you know are you gonna you're gonna be soft or are you gonna harden up and get out there and play and, and kind of turn up that that warrior dial right that's what you need to do uh, anyhow volleyball is a great community and it's a great team sport. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, what makes our sport uh, unique compared to other sports. So uh, that's a nice little segue, Dom. It's almost like you've done this before, but barely. Okay. So, all right. So let's talk about what kind of sport. Oh, hang on. Let's, let's back it up. Let's back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Make sure you get involved. At least reach out. See what's up. See how good your team is. Maybe they've won a few state championships. You know, uh, maybe they've just got a bunch of beginners and it's first year program. So uh, check into it. Get involved and see what you can do to help out. Even if you don't play, see how you can help. It's always good to help to help others, right? All right. Now, here we go. We're going to go on to what makes volleyball a unique sport, right? Well, one, it's a true team sport, right? You depend on other people to get you the ball, to pass the ball to them so they can attack or score somehow, right? Uh, there's not a lot of sports like it. Typically, you want to do it in three contacts, right? But it doesn't always happen that way. But in most sports... You know, only the team with the ball can score, you know, like, say, basketball or football. Um, you know, and that's that's not part of the volleyball game, really. You know, like, every error becomes a point for the other team. So you're giving up a point on your error, right? And the only part of that we can really control when we have the ball, like those other sports, is when we serve. So that's when our strategy, that's when defense starts, right? Um, but serve strategies are very important, you know, and it's up to you to actually be committed to hit the zones coach is giving you. Some coaches uh, won't give zones. So even in college, they still give zones. So it's not like it's a beneath you act, right? Make sure you're hitting those zones and take serving very, very seriously and stop hitting it in the net. We're hitting it out of bounds. You know, I'll take out of bounds long before I will take in the net short because that's just that's just dumb. But anyhow, that's giving up a point. That's an error for the other team. Or an error for your team is a point for the other team. So think about that for a second. Like, what if that happened in football or basketball, you know? Uh, so we control when we have the ball in our hand, which serve, which we already talked about. Uh, where the other team, when they, have, when they have the ball and they give it up, it's not necessarily an immediate point. 
it might result in a point later, but immediately it's just a turnover, right? Now, now, they, now they've got to try and run offense and try and score or whatever. Not the case in volleyball, right? All right, so we can't keep the ball to run out the clock. You know, there's no way we can really kind of delay the game, except for, the, you know, the classics like, hey, the floor's wet, or I got to tie my shoe, or, you know, you got some sort of weird injury thing going on. You know, there's a few ways to delay the game, but not while the ball is live, right? When the ball's live, you're playing. Uh, and eventually, unless you get into one of those really long rallies, I think there was a <clears throat> there was a championship NCAA championship match. It might have been Illinois, Stanford, Illinois, UCLA. I can't remember. It's been a while, but I think at one point there was a rally that had forty some contacts. Uh, I don't think it's a record, but uh, that is a long rally without terminating the ball. So, um, you know, again, nobody really had the opportunity to score. I guess I don't know what happened there, but. Anyhow, uh, all right, so we're moving on. You know, like in, in baseball, you know, one player has to do one thing before something can happen. You know, i got to pitch, then you got to swing, or the catcher's got to throw it back to the pitcher. And, <sighs> this takes forever, right? It's, um, I don't know if that's a true team sport either, you know what I mean? Like, you got guys in certain positions, but, again, you can strike some dude out from the mound, whatever, or you can hit a home run and score for your team, and uh, you don't need anybody, right? So... That's what makes our sport pretty unique. Um, and in volleyball, like, offense is defense. You know what I mean? And errors give points away. So uh, these are the things that you got to be you got to be aware of. It's not a good thing to give points away, especially when you're trying so hard to score or you train so hard to score points. You know what I mean? You run plays, you got your serve-receive plays, you got your offense, defensive, free ball plays, whatever, and your priority play sets, however your strategy or coach sets it up. Um, you train to score points. You don't train to give points away. Right, so you really need to uh, you really need to make a conscious effort of not giving points away. Uh, even you know, if the ball's not if it's not dimes and it's not a perfect set, all right, don't get there and try to take a perfect swing. All right, it's probably not going to happen. Just reset the ball, recycle the ball, get it back into play, run your defense, uh, and then hopefully the other team will make an error, and you you know you won't have to earn anything. I mean, why do you want to get out there and play if the other team's just going to give you points, right? Anyhow. What I'm trying to say is, let's not make errors, okay? This is a tough enough sport as it is, so let's not make errors and just give away points, right? Let's work together, use our three contacts, set it up, play quick, play hard, play powerful, play fast, whatever you want to do. Um, but, you know, you, it's about it's about that effort and, you know, having your head in the game not to give up points, right? And it's hard to do. Uh, luckily, we have 25 of them, so... <laughs> Uh, well, in some cases, you know, I think you guys know what I'm saying. But anyhow, all right. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll happen in the future. Anyhow, that's it for this episode. It was short and quick, and we're going to talk about other stuff on the episode that I think is also important to high school and club volleyball and about finding your personal warrior. And I've got a book for you to read if you've not read it. Uh, I'll kind of tease it right here, but it's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Uh, pretty cool little book. It's got a great message. Uh, like I said, we're going to dig into it more. It's about a, a young guy who's training to be uh, a samurai archer, right? I think it's kudo is what, what that is. It's one of the seven arts of the samurai. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later on the next episode. All right. So that's it for this one. Episode eight, In the Tank, Atomic Dom, out. <laughs>